Welcome to New Zealand, thanks for joining me. Well today we are testing, and doing a comparison between Ektachrome on the Leica M6 and digital on the Leica M8. Stay tuned, some interesting results to come. Welcome. Thanks for, thanks for joining me. Well, um, if you have seen my previous episode of Ektachrome, which was about two or three weeks ago, um, I uh, went out and shot some film, shot Ektachrome on the uh, Leica M6, got it back, got it developed, and had a look at the shots, and um, kind of wasn't overly kind of excited about what I got back. Um, I made the comment that I didn't really see the value of shooting this film um, Compared to digital, I, you know, I, I, I like shooting black and white. I'm a black and white photographer when it comes to film. I like the uh, space I get into when I'm shooting black and white film. Um, colors are a bit different for me, and uh, shooting this film in particular, I just didn't really see um, anything that moved me enough to shoot it in the future. But um, I, made a, I made a comment at the time that I was gonna take my Leica M8 and uh, refill the M6 with another roll of uh, E100, and uh, just do some comparisons to shoot both both, both um, cameras side by side, and just uh, check out the results. So, um, what I did is, I, like I said, I got the Leica Remote. The reason why I used my Leica Remote was because, for a couple of reasons, um, it's an older camera, uh, so it's not going to kind of um, be the latest technology. So to give the film a bit of a, a fair run for its money, I guess, uh, use the M8. Um, the other main reason was because. I only have one 35mm lens for my um, for my Leica Leicas, and that's the that's the Summicron, um, and the M8 having a crop sensor by putting a 28mm Zeiss on there, the f2.8 gives me a very similar focal length, if not the same. So I wanted to kind of like do an apples for apples comparison, and um, rather than you know use another camera, uh, another Leica, and, and, and have a different focal length. Um, so I did that. I went out. I basically um, it didn't take as much time as I was promising that I was going to do. Uh, I, I was fairly rushed. I um, had to get up to Auckland to drop this film off to Lorenzo at the black and white box. Um, and uh, ran out of time really, so what I got, we went, I went up there, um, I, sh I took a few shots around the home here, and then uh, got up to Auckland. Uh, got Lorenzo to come around Ellerslie, the streets of Ellerslie. We took some shots on the streets there. Mm, nothing fantastic, just picked out a few shots, did some side-by-side -side pictures. I took the first shot with the M8, showed him the, the, uh, the LCD. He took a comparative shot. Um, and uh, we ended up taking about 25 shots. We didn't r run the whole roll through there, so it was fairly, fairly kind of laid back and um, uh, yeah, it wasn't too much kind of concern about creating or capturing magical images. Um, so we did that, and uh, these are the results. Now, before I show you the results, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you the uh, M6 shot first, the film shot, and then I'm going to show you the M8 shot next. Now, just a, a note that um, as far as any processing, I've done very little processing on EVA image. Um, really, all I've done is just got some contrast um, the just done some contrast change on there. I haven't changed uh, any um, white balance. I haven't done any major processing on either of the shots. Um, I have used the DNG raw files off the M8 uh, and pretty much the JPEGs that I got back off Lorenzo uh, from uh, the black and white box. Um, so, you know, I could play around with these images, particularly with the digital image, I could actually enhance them quite a lot more, but I haven't done that. I've just given you the basic, um, pretty much the, the raw file as it's come off the camera. Okay, cool. And um, before I um, go through them, just, just quickly a thank you to Lorenzo. Thanks, mate, for um, again processing the uh, film for me and um, helping me out shoot the pictures. Okay, so let's, um, let's go and check these pictures out and um, see what you think. We'll see you back here in a minute.
Um, well, I hope you enjoyed those pictures. Um, it was kind of interesting because my opinion of the film has changed a little bit, but overall, I still feel the same way. Uh, there was a couple of pictures there. I looked at them and I thought, well, I can really see, you know, if you get your light right and you get the tones right and you, um, you know, you 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 are working within a certain um, range on your histogram or your dynamic range, within a certain, you know, probably a little bit more to the left of the histogram. Um, I can see some of these images starting to bring, you know, come out with qualities. And in particular, there was the picture of the coffee cup on the bench. And I looked at that and I thought, yeah, I can see that. That really has qualities about it that I really like. And um, something that I'm not quite going to achieve with digital. And then I started to think about it. And I thought, well, again, if I was experienced at using this film, um, I shot it a lot and I was shooting it for a specific purpose. I could see this being quite a good film for maybe... Um, a little bit of commercial use maybe or um, you know product or um, model type photography with the right lights I think it would kind of um, you know I think the more the more detailed you are with the use the more specific you are with the use the more experienced you are with it then you're going to get the qualities from this film that I think it deserves um, if you're somebody like me who does not shoot a lot of film does not shoot a lot of slide film then I think you know it, from a shoot from the hip type of perspective then I don't see that this film is going to give you a lot more, um, or I, I, to rephrase that, I think you're better off shooting digital. Uh, and in, in most cases, that's me. Um, but over a period of time, with more experience using it um, and more specific use, I can definitely see a reason for this, this film. I think it's a nice film. I like it. Um, I think it has a purpose. Um, it's great to see Kodak coming back and bringing these sorts of things back again. Hopefully they'll start to roll out on other films that they've um, discontinued. Um, I think it's positive and I think it's good and I think that, um, you know, great to see that we're on the up with film photography. So, um, yeah, that's where I stand on it. Hopefully that all makes sense. Again, I don't want to be over technical about what I'm talking about. Um, you know, I'm not... You know, I'm not going to rip it apart technically. I think if you want a, a bit more of a technical perspective on it, um, Matt Day has put out a really good video on, on Ethochrome. He's spent a bit more time on it than I have, and he's come up with some really nice conclusions. He's done some nice photography with it. Um, go and check out his video. There's a link below for that video. Go and check out uh, Matt's video. Um, as, as usual, you know, Matt puts out fantastic content. I really um, like the way he does stuff. He has a nice mix of photography versus the technical side of things. and um, uh, I think his video on Instagram is excellent, so go and check that video out. Um, I think that's about it. I think that's all I've got for today. Um, just quickly before I do sign off, um, hey, if you want to support the channel, if you like my channel and it's it it brings um, some value to you in your everyday life and your photography, or if it inspires you, um, then you can do a couple of things for me. Um, and I don't want to try and start selling you heaps of stuff on this channel, um, but. If you, if, if you do want to support me, a good way to do that is to buy my prints. Um, go to my website. I'm shipping prints all over the world now. Uh, there's a link below uh, for my print page on my website. So if you want to go and buy a print, uh, I've got several sitting up there uh, over time. They're only up there for a limited amount of time. They're going to start coming down. I'll put new ones up. So go and check out the print um, page on my website. There's a link below for that. Um, the other way you can support me is by giving me a thumbs up or sharing this video um, and subscribing. Um, it may be a little thing, but it does help my channel and it really does, the, the more my channel grows, the more it helps me to achieve what I want to achieve in it, the more it just helps me create this content that hopefully everybody's enjoying. That's enough selling. <laughs> so um, I'm going to wrap up now. I'm going to, I'm going to sign off. Um, I think that's all I've got. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you got something out of it. Um, come back again soon, please. Uh, until you do, Hari Ra from New Zealand. Goodbye. Take care. <laughs>